Well, they're hooking up one of the finest truck pulling vehicles that's ever been on a track. This is the Orange Blossom Special. Maybe the root of everything that Alan Gaines has ever done. Alan Gaines owns it. It's Kalen News who gets the chore of driving it tonight. But that is the original. Oldest competing pulling truck in America. There is a great shot of Kalen almost on cue. Uh, opens the door and he says, I'm a smart guy. That's why I was... I forgot my helmet. Oh. <laughs> now look at his shoes. Look down at his shoes. They're gone. No, well, that's an Alan Gaines trick because Alan doesn't drive with shoes. And I believe he's just got Mike Hoff's helmet. You know, Alan will probably tell him, he'll probably get home, and Alan's going to say now, Kalen, what's the deal? How come you left town without your helmet? Uh, he's got it. I think he just got a little excited and forgot it. Listen to this truck. He's out the door, too, and we will have a pull-off. Wheels are spinning and the girls are grinning with the Orange Blossom Special cooking outside. I'll tell you what, Kalen Dew says, I might have a borrowed helmet and I may not have any shoes, but I sure know how to stand on it. He'll shift this truck right there, puts it to the high side, leaves the second and trucks right out the gate into the pull-off. It's a full pole for the OBS. And two trucks now have qualified for the big enchilada. So right now we have two trucks in the pull-off, the Valley Shaker and the Orange Blossom Special. They have both gone the full distance, 150 feet. And maybe now, maybe now, Ron Keel from Chelsea uh, can go the full distance himself. He's got this 80 Dodge, just under 500 cubic feet. It's called a Twister. Chelsea, Michigan. Supercharged Emmy. It is supercharged. There's a good shot of Ron, too. 498 cubic inches. In gear. Horsepower. it down the track too I think you could see and we will see on the replay how he was working the wheel looking for the right space the right place for those tires to bite big blown Hemi eases out of the starting line area uncracks the horsepower still just moving into it moving in hasn't opened up the butterfly now he's gonna go for the full throttle Working his way around the track. Not enough there. Mike, when you look at trucks on this circuit, you can look at classics all you want, but you can look no further than this. There was a class of trucks, a line of trucks built back in the 30s called the Diamond Keys. And of course, we all know that they're not around anymore, except for this one. It's a beautiful truck Eddie Pal has. Rich truck. Very rich truck. Beautiful truck. I would call that color, and we see them hooking them on now, but kind of a plum color truck. Bought the truck in 1983, said so it was all rusted out. The frame and the lights are original on this truck, and he says that he has people, one guy in particular, a Kentucky State Trooper, will drive up to 300 miles to see him pull. You're going to find out why. He owns a trucking company. He's been doing it for 12 years. 1988 Kentucky State Points Champion. Built it in 10 weeks. Here's Mr. Diamond D. Nice pull for the Mr. Diamond T. The Mr. Diamond T. I mean, really, Mike, you don't see a lot of Diamond T's anywhere anymore. This is maybe one of the biggest left. Very possible. That truck didn't sound just right on the end of that pull when it popped back. Uh, a little bit of a problem. Let's take a listen on the end of that pull. It may have just leaned out. Sounds great here. He shifts the truck. Get some momentum. There he shifts. But now listen to it right on the end. Oh! Yeah, the, the two backfires out of the left bank. And that's not good. Just leaned no. it out a little bit. Well, here is a truck 
from Mantua, Ohio. This is Phil Carlton and Philly's Paycheck. And I think one of the reasons why it's called Philly's Paycheck is because more than one of Phil's paychecks has gotten to pay for this. A gorgeous truck, though, Mike. Beautiful. Farmer by... Well, I don't know if you'd call farming a profession right well, now. He grows soybeans, I can tell you that. And this is a 77 Chevy. Great look at the hook. Been alluding to that all night. Automatic trans, and he needs the full pull. The 150 mark will set him into the pull-off. Oh, he lost power at the end. Now, they will first thing they're going to do is check to see if the kill switch was pulled. If the kill switch pulled, now, what, if it did pull, would he get to go again? He would get a re-pull. If the kill switch is still intact... That's what they're checking right now. Then... Uh, Why would the kill switch be pulled? The bouncing around it, any number of things could have happened. Well, he is not a happy man, and I think he's going to go back and take a look at it. Not a, not a happy camper, and he doesn't even go back to the kill switch. He knows there's problems beyond that. So whatever the problem was, it was something in Philly's paycheck. And undoubtedly, the next paycheck that Phil Carlton gets will go to fix it. Mike, let's take a look at this run right from the start. Truck looks good, sounds good. But when it dies, it dies instantly. Listen to it. Yep. It's over with. I mean like that. Just like you shut the fire off. Well, we were supposed to have a pull-off between the Valley Shaker and the Orange Blossom Special, but a funny thing happened on the way to the sled. The uh, Valley Shaker blew its transmission out. Maybe some of that uh, cigar smoke from Jackie Sewell filtered into the engine. In any event, the winner of the Super Modified Competition by default, by default of the Valley Shaker engine, is the Orange Blossom Special. Center field are the relics that will soon be reduced to rubble because, Mike, we not only have a barefoot truck here tonight, we've got a barefoot truck with some wild wheels on it. We saw it in the open. Well, this is all new. Barefoot racer. And, uh, you know, when Fred Schaefer comes out, he comes out strong. But this is Goliath. Let's take a look at the vital statistics of Alan Torres' truck. Alan from Warren, Ohio, up near the Youngstown area. And as you can see, 500 horsepower. But look at how high up that truck sits. 12 feet, 6 inches, almost as wide as it is high, and a gross weight of 18,000 pounds. And not one, but two supercharged Ford motors. One in the front, one in the back for Goliath. Well, he's going to he's on over it. Ooh, that doesn't show good. The two left-hand tires are trying to move, but the two right-hand tires aren't trying to go. Now we've got them to come around and hook up. Now one pass over the cars, and Goliath will come back for another. Mike, I think what's interesting is you have a hard rubber tire on this truck, and then a softer rubber tire, and a thinner tire on uh, the barefoot truck that we'll see in just a moment. Well, two completely different designs. Fred's designed for racing, quick, agile. Allen's is a truck truck. Oh, man! It is a heavy piece of equipment. Allen says he's toured almost a half million miles with this truck. Is that a He's been around, uh, around the continent several times. And as Barefoot Racer rolls out onto the track, let's go down to our own Mike Galloway, who's got the inside look on this truck with the fat tires. Mike? I'm with Fred Schaefer, and Fred Schaefer is always innovative in this sport. And Fred, this thing is completely out of the ordinary for a monster truck. Yeah, we've got about two years of thought in this truck, and it's all fiberglass. It weighs in between eight and 9,000 pounds. It's got a, a big motor in it, and uh, we've got a lot of faith in this truck. Now, Fred, eight to 9,000 pounds, that's almost half the weight of a normal monster truck. Where did you lose all the weight? Well, we lost about 1,500 in these new tires that we're experimenting with. Uh, the fiberglass body is real light, aluminum firewall, aluminum floorboards, and uh, just tried to make it as light, as strong as possible. 
I've noticed something else that you're trying to skim over and not say anything about, but I've uh, been kind of looking a little bit. The rear ends, they're not the top loaders. No, this is something we're trying, and some of the pulling guys has helped me with this a little bit. Uh, this is a 106 Rockwells, and uh, they're about 500 pounds a piece lighter than the old five tons, and there's a lot of advantages to using this, and, and so far they've held up real well. How long have you had the truck out, Fred? Uh, this is the third week for it. What is the biggest difference between the barefoot racer and barefoot? Well, I guess uh, horsepower per pound is the biggest thing, and we've got a Linko and a slipper clutch in here that we're experimenting with. I'm kind of learning to have to drive it again, so I'm, I'm kind of learning to drive a little bit. I need a few more weeks in the truck to really uh, get competitive with it. I've never seen the time that I thought Fred Schaefer ever needed any extra time in a truck to get competitive. He's always on top. The brand new barefoot racer will keep him there. Look at that. Now this truck is all fiberglass. Is that right? All fiberglass, new setup on it. It is just, it could be the thing of the future. And he's lowered the truck. He's got the body down. The motor is further down inside of it. And he's lost a lot of weight on the tires themselves. They're very they're thin tires. They're not very thick tires. They're an experimental tire. Uh -huh. And uh, there's Fred. These tires and wheels weigh about 600 pounds a piece, and that's with steel wheels. So he could probably get them down to four and a half or something like that with the aluminum. But it's all new. Clipper clutch, he's got a new setup on the clutch, the transmission, everything is brand new in this truck and it's all, as it says right there on the side of it, that's the key, barefoot racer. Back to now speaking for my partner Mike Galloway and our producer director Tom Williamson, this is Ken Brew reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud Sports, aired through the facilities of ESPN. So long everybody.